Um, so, we're going to just talk, we've covered all the cell organelles, so you should know basically what the organelles are, what they do. Um, we're just going to use the cell study here as a little bit of an analogy to try to um, review what the various organelles do. So if we imagine a cell, we'll say this is a plant cell. So if you imagine a plant cell as a city, we can compare these different parts of the city um, to different cell organelles in terms of what they do. So let's start with number one. So this is the fence that surrounds the city. Gabby, yeah, what would you say that is? Cell wall. Yeah, that would be the cell wall. I don't have the names up here. You just have to write them in. Write it above the one. Yeah, that would be the cell wall. Provides some what protection of the cell, okay, and defines the outside. Now number two is just slightly different. Number two is this entry, this guard house. Um, and which organelle would that be? Caleb? Cell membrane? Yeah, that would be the cell membrane. Thank you. Because it's responsible for allowing certain things into the cell or out of the cell. Yes, yes. Yeah, write it down. Now, number three is this construction site. It's building the parts, the other buildings within the cell. It's making them. So what organelle do you think that would be, Emma? Yeah. No, because that doesn't make anything. Noah? Yeah, that would be the ribosome. Most cell organelles are actually made of protein, and we know ribosome's job is to make, make protein. protein. Right. So that's the ribosome. Now number four is, you have to look carefully, because you're probably thinking one of two different organelles. Notice that all of the roads here are within the city. None of these roads lead out of the city. So what organelle would number four represent, Liam? That would be the ER. That would be the ER. What was the other possibility? Golgi, Golgi bodies. But the Golgi bodies are responsible for transporting things out of the cell. The ER keeps things within the cell. Now, there's a word I want you to recognize. So ER is responsible for what we call intracellular transport. Intracellular. What is the accompanying term, which means transport things outside of the cell? Cormac? Wait, what do you mean? So intracellular means everything's within the cell. The word for transfer of outside for it? Extracellular? Now, yeah, that's actually probably very close. But I'm going to use a different term that sounds very similar. Right? Um, no? That, that would be a good signal. You know, does mean outside. Intercellular. Oh. So inter versus intra. Intra means within, inter means out. Think about it. Internet sends information outside to other computers. Oh, or if you remember, did anyone ever have an ID put in like because oh, you had oh, what does ID stand for? Identification. Intra venous. Venus. It means within your vein. Wait, I Intra means so within. So anyway, the ER is responsible for intracellular transport within the cell. Golgi bodies are responsible for intercellular transport. All right, how about five? The power plant, Julianne. Yeah, that represents mitochondria, releasing energy to power the cell. How about number six, this greenhouse which grows the food to feed the people of the city? Oh, 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 o
It's responsible for recycling organelles that are no longer working, for digesting material, getting rid of things within the cell. Well, no, not Golgi bodies. Well, no, Julian. Lysosome. Yes, lysosome. L Y S O S O M E S. Lysosome. I just did it. Sound it out. Go ahead, you can do it. L Y S. All right, number eight. How about the government building of this city? Kiana? That would be the nucleus, yes. And finally, the storage tanks. No? Vacuoles, yes, vacuoles. We didn't, we didn't, um, we didn't, we're not going to label the others, so it just wants to get an example. Now, on the next couple slides, you actually have several um, examples, um, but we're not going to go over all these. They're pretty much, um, once you've done this a couple times, you probably figure all those out. So what I want to do is just uh, skip out a couple slides here. We never got to watch that video. Oh, the cell theory one? Yeah. yeah. One version, two on four. Yeah. That's what we're doing. All right. Now, this next slide, you don't have the, the boxes. Oh, right. But you don't necessarily need them. So when we talk about living organisms, there is a range of complexity. You know, some living organisms, like, what's the simplest type of living, living thing? Okay. Yeah, what kind of cells? Like what? Yeah, like what? Some are more complex than others, even. Like? Bacteria. Yeah, bacteria are the simplest living things. They actually don't even have organelles inside them. Okay? So they're single cell, very simple, very small. Um, as we look at different types of organisms, though, some are more complex. For example, protists, like an amoeba or paramecium, they're also single cell, but they're more complex than a bacteria. They have many organelles inside many parts. Then if we look at, for example, multicellular animals, some are very simple, things like a sponge basically just a, a bunch of cells and tissue all put together. Up in, we can get more and more complex. If you think about a human, for example, we're very complex. And so this tape, this chart, shows you the organization of living things, from the simplest types to more complex. So in very simple living things, we have cells. Okay? A cell is the basic unit of life, you know. But even within our body, we obviously are made of cells. And there's many different types of cells in our bodies. They're not all identical. In our notes, we kind of draw animal cells, these circulars with all these organelles. Almost none of them actually look like that, though. Okay. All cells are nerve cells look completely different than blood cells, which look completely different from skin cells, which look completely different um, from muscle cells. They all are unique because they have certain jobs to do. For example, an example of a cell, a muscle cell, which looks like this. Oh. Noah? Don't worry about it. Val? Okay. Oh, wait, what did you just say? I didn't hear Something about Harry Potter. Yeah, that's why I got it. It doesn't matter. We're focus on what we're doing now. Stuff leaves your body, then it's just getting your red. So, if we start off with muscle cells, okay? Some in more complex organisms, these cells work together in groups and they form what we call tissues. Tissue is a group of cells working together to complete some task, to fulfill some need. For example, a whole series of muscle cells working together forms the different types of muscle tissue. Now, if you're in health right now, you may be able to name the three types of muscle tissue. Uh, 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 no. Grace? Wait, I think, I think oh. There's the cardio. Cardiac. Oh, cardiac. Mm -hmm. Skeletal. Yep. 
So, yeah, those are three types of muscle tissue. Each of those types of muscle tissue is made of a group of these cells all working together. Then if we move up a level of complexity, sometimes various types of tissue work together. Okay? And then they form what we call organs. The group of tissues work together forms an organ. Now, for example, our heart. Our heart is made of muscle tissue mainly, but also nerve tissue as well. So several types of tissue working together. You can probably guess the definition of an organ system based on this pattern, chart. Well, like heart. Well, I'm so like, your heart is an uh, organ. Organ, <laughs> organ system, like how what, like your heart does, like pumps blood through your body. Well, sort of, Corbin. Groups of organs working together. Yeah, a group of organs that works together is an organ system. You know, the heart, along with arteries and veins, capillaries. Forms what body system? The system. Circulatory or cardiovascular system. And then if we reach the final level of complexity here, a bunch of different organ systems all working together form an entire living organism. One living thing, like a full human, for example. Why Harry Potter? Why not Harry Potter? Because he's not famous anymore. He's so famous. He'll always be famous. No, he won't. Daniel Radcliffe. Last title, but he had a little bit of an argument. They said that Harry Potter was not a human because he was a wizard. Right? I said, was that started by a human? No, it's not a human. 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 Yes. I don't know. All right. The last thing we need to do today in our notes. Why am I here again? The last thing I need to do today is show you some of these pictures. This will help for review also because you guys do have a quiz on Thursday on the organelles. And so like I said, when we, when we looked at drawings of the cells and those diagrams, everything's sort of neat and all different colors and they're all very clear. In reality, things don't look so neat. These are actual electron microscope images of various cell organelles. Um, and you could probably identify most of them, I would think. Which organelle do you think this is, Nicola? Yeah, what, what was your clue? Looks like a bean with all these folds inside. Yes, that's the mitochondria. Somebody else, raise your hand and tell me what is its function? Said? Uh, it supplies energy. Okay, supplies energy, releases energy. Do not write what's going to appear on the screen next. Mr. Archery, put this in. What don't I like? Makes, releases. I don't like the shit. I did. We had words about this. Yeah. Why don't you just change it? I don't. Yeah, you so, know. We've already had it. He's just recovering from our discussion. Mr. Girard, she's He's still a little bit upset, so please do not bring it up. I have a question. Anyway, the Anyway, the size for each of these organelles, we're going to estimate sort of how big they are in this image. These um, mitochondria are about five micrometers, so that means very small. Okay, the mitochondria are, are, are very small. Now this one is a little bit difficult to tell because these are not shown in their, the typical way we show them where they're double stranded. These are single stranded, but you probably can still tell. What's okay. single stranded? Ah. All right. Chromosome. Not quite. Chromosome. But you got the end of the word correct. Julianne? Chromosomes. What do chromosomes, what is their function? Liam? Carry DNA. They, well, they're made of DNA is the better way to say it. They carry what? Information. Information. They carry our genetic information. What is it? Yeah. In a single cell from your body, the chromosomes have all the specifications for how to build you in a tiny little 
So you know the length of a chromosome can vary, obviously. Chromosomes come in different sizes. <coughs> About five microns for some of these. One and two are both showing parts of one larger organelle. So what's the larger organelle? Well, uh, the nucleus. It is the nucleus. Number, don't write it down though. The number one is showing what part of the nucleus? How about? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Nope. Eight? Nucleus member. Not number one. Oh, wait. Sidra? Nucleolus. Nucleolus. Which produces? Which produces? Nothing. Edda? Ribosomes. Makes the ribosomes. Number two. What would we call number two in this diagram? Grace? Nuclear membrane. It's the nuclear membrane, which controls things entering and leaving the nucleus. There's something, the chromosomes, for example, cannot get out of the nucleus. DNA is stuck inside. But other things can get out. Things like RNA. DNA is double-stranded, uh, RNA is single-stranded. It's a different sugar as ribose rather than deoxyribose. It also has the nitrogenous base uracil rather than thymine. It's just going to confuse you. So what do you want to Yes, no. Oh, so well, there's several. There's Actually, three types of RNA. There's ribosomal RNA, transfer RNA, and messenger RNA, all of which need to work together to create proteins using DNA as a template for the recipe for how to build those proteins. DNA sort of has the master recipe for how to build all the proteins. It gets copied into RNA for it to actually happen. All right. What type of cell do you think this is? Trevor? I think the what I think like it was a uh, then the fill wait oh the cell. What kind of cell? Oh what kind of cell? What kind of cell? Oh the uh plant cell. Yeah, it is a plant cell. <laughs> we can tell by its shape and also by the presence of this organelle, which is so what cool. Remember. The cell wall, which gives structure and protection to the plant cell. What about the vacuole? What about it? That's Is that vacuole. giant that vacuole? Also vacuole? Yeah, that would also be another one. Yeah, that, that whole thing vacuole? Excuse me? Is that whole giant? Yeah, white that big white space, yes. So that's all the vacuole? Yes. How about down here? What organelle is this? Series of tubes look like. Oh. Um, is that the Golgi bodies? Close. Looks very similar. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Golgi bodies. Gabby? Yeah. Okay. What's that? Smooth. Yeah, that's ER. We'll just call it ER. ER is responsible for what type of transportation? Use the word I taught you today. Um, Easy. Maybe. Spencer. Spencer. No? Nicholas? Intracellular transport. Within the cell transport. Leading to our last organelle. What organelle are we looking at here? Sidra. Those are the Golgi bodies. They are responsible for what? Use a word I taught you today. They are responsible for Noah? Intercellular transport. They package up stuff that will be leaving the cell.
right, last step. We need to fill this slide out. This is, we were going to review this before we did the uh, cell lab, but we didn't. So we'll just review it now. How do you make a wet mouth? Um, step one. Get a slide. Get a slide. Get a slide. Okay. What do we place on the slide? Or a drop of water. Or, 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 or stain. Stain. All those stripes. So put a drop of water or stain on your slide. Next. Put item on. Say, let's call it a specimen. specimen. What do we have to be sure about our specimen? It's in the water. Raise your hand. Nate? That it's not alive. No, well, it could be alive, actually. Emma? It like well, it should be in the liquid. Gabby? That it's not folded. Yeah, that it's not folded. I'm, I'm looking for something else, though. All right. So it doesn't have air bubbles? No. That's it. So that the light can. No, our sample must be. Oh, it's transparent. Then, oh. and now, do a lot of light to pass through. That's kind of like what you're pretending. Yeah. yeah. Next, place sample on the slide. Finally, Emma. That's what I'm asking you. Sophia, cover, not slide. Slip. 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 Cover slip on at an angle so that you force any.